In this video, you're going to learn about sliding window technique, which is super common in technical interviews. And there's two main types of sliding window problems. The first one is fixed sliding window. And the second one is a little bit more advanced. And I'm going to cover that in the part two video. So this is going to be a part one video. And in the end of the video, I'm going to walk you through a leak code problem where you're going to apply what you learned in this video to that problem. So let's get into this. The sliding window is where you iterate over a contiguous sequence of elements by building out a window and performing calculations on that window. I'm gonna demonstrate a fixed sliding window, which is where the window has the same size. Usually it's called the size of K. Think of it as two rectangles. We got a big rectangle here and a little rectangle here. This big rectangle represents the whole array or string that we're iterating through. And the little rectangle represents the window that we're going to slide. And with this little rectangle, we're going to do some calculation, like get the sum or average or whatever the problem's asking. And we're going to shift the window and ask ourselves, can we do better? And we're going to keep shifting the window and asking ourselves, can we do better until we hit the end of the whole contiguous sequence? All right, so in this example, we're going to find the minimum sum of a contiguous subarray of size K. And this is a pretty common type of problem when it comes to fixed sliding window. And we gotta make sure in this case that we keep the window of size three because that's where our K value is. So we're first gonna take a look at our first window of size three, and we're gonna get the sum of this. And we see that it's eight. And in this case, eight is our minimum sum so far because we haven't, this is our first window. We haven't checked any of the other windows yet in this contiguous sequence. So I'm gonna write eight up here and I'm gonna erase this. Remember, we gotta ask ourselves, can we do better than eight? And in this case, better means, can we find a sum that's smaller than what we currently have right now? And so in this case, we do have a sum that's smaller than eight and it's six. So I'm gonna get rid of that and then slide the window. And this sum is seven. And seven is greater than six in this case. So this sum is not better than this one. So I'm gonna keep this value and I'm gonna keep moving forward, seeing if I can find a smaller sum. In this case, one plus two plus one, that's equal to four. And four is less than six. So we're gonna update our minimum sum. So that's four now. And then let's check our last window to see if it's better. In this case, it's not because two plus one plus two is equal to five. And we reached the end of the whole list. So we, we have our final answer, which is four. That is the minimum sum of this contiguous subarray of size three. And hopefully this made sense. If it didn't, then the Lico problem that I'm gonna walk you through is going to help you solidify your understanding of this fixed sliding window. All right, so the leak code problem is called minimum recolors to get K consecutive black blocks. And I think that this is a, I've done this leak code problem before, I'm just walking you through it. And I think it's a pretty foundational problem to understand if you want to know how, if you want to know what fixed sliding window is. So I'm gonna read it now. You're given a zero index string blocks of length N where blocks of I is either W or B and represents the color of the I's block. The character W and B denote the colors white and black respectively. And you're also given an integer K, which is the desired number of consecutive black blocks. So in this case, I can see that K is going to be our fixed, it's gonna be the size of our fixed sliding window. And I can see that it's um, it's one of the arguments for the function. So we're given K, which is a good thing. And let's keep reading. So it says, in one operation, you can recolor a white block such that it becomes a black block and return the minimum number of operations needed such that there's at least one occurrence of K consecutive black blocks. Okay. So, this, what this is saying, you have to, you have to translate this into a more general, general idea because, because fixed lighting window, it could be applied to many different kinds of, 
many different problems. It's just that the every single problem has a different scenario. And in this case, the scenario is we're recoloring blocks. And you just, know how to, you just need to know how to translate that. So we have to translate, it says minimum number of operations. It might sound confuse, confusing, but what it's really saying is that it's just asking to find the number of, the minimum number of W's in a string. That's all it's asking. It's using this confusing, this confusing language to trip you up. But at the end of the day, it's just asking you to find the minimum number of W's. Because the W's are what we can recolor. So we're going to have two pointers, a left pointer pointing here and a right pointer also pointing here, the same place. The right pointer is going to be iterating through each character and checking if it's a W or not. The left pointer is going to be checking, it's going to be keeping track of the start of our window. And so when we do this, we have to first build out the initial window. So I'm going to keep, when we start out in the for loop, we're going to keep iterating this right pointer until we hit, until we have a window of size seven. So that's going to be over, that's going to be over here. So once we get that initial window, then it gets, it gets a bit easier because once we get our initial window, we're just counting the number of W's, which is three in this case. And then we got to add, we got to shift or slide the window by, slide the window by adding this one into our window, this new character, and then we're going to subtract, or we're going to remove this character, the, the start of our previous window. We're going to get rid of that so that we have, we keep our window of size seven. And this character that we're removing, that was our, let me use another color for that. That was this character, our left pointer. So over here. So we're going to, if this happens, we got to decrease the number of W's we have because we don't want to include this W inside our new window. So I'm going to have, I'm gonna first import math because because like I said before, we want to have a minimum W variable that keeps track of the number of Ws. And that's gonna be equal to math.infinity. And so this is just an arbitrary large number. Our current sum is going to, or not current sum, sorry. Current W is going to be equal to zero. And we're going to be returning the minimum number of Ws in the end of this whole function. And in between that, we're gonna use or we're gonna have two pointers, a left and a right equal to zero. And we're gonna say while the right is less than or equal to, or is less than the length of their strings, then we're going to, we're gonna say if we want to keep track of, or we want to update our current W, we wanna increase it by one, if the, if the value that we're on is equal to W. And remember like how I said before that our right pointer is going to be the one doing all the, the, the work. It's checking if it's a W or not, while the left pointer is just keeping track of the start of the window. That's why I'm saying blocks of R instead of blocks of L. And we also gotta check, here, here's the important part. We have to see if R minus L plus one is equal to k, then we want to we want to also check if the the value at the left pointer at the start of the window is w. If it is, then we decrease it by one. And I gotta also make sure that we do this. We decrease the current w variable by one after we've already updated our min value. So min w is equal to min of the min, the current min value and the, the cur current w variable. 
so why am I doing r minus l plus one? Because that represents the that represents the size of the window. So in this case, like let's say our our k was equal to three, then if r was two, if r was equal to two and l was equal to zero, that would mean that we have a size of three because Python uses zero based indexing. That's why I do is plus one over here. So if we reach our our size of our size of k in a, for a window, we're going to update our minimum value, and we're also going to update our current w value if the value at the left pointer turns out to be w. And then we also got to make sure because we don't want it to be an infinite loop. So I'm going to say l plus one or l plus equals one because that's going to shift the sh the start. That's going to move the, the left pointer so that our starting starting point of the window is updated. And we also got to iterate. We're going to iterate our right pointer every single time because that's always going to be increasing because that's checking the, the whether or not it's W or B every single time. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to return or I've already returned it over here. So we're good on that. And yeah, that should be it if I did everything properly. And if I, yeah, so it did work. We got both of these cases worked. And let's see if it passed all the cases. And yeah, it did. So runtime beats 100%. And in this case, our the time complexity wise, it's gonna be, it's gonna be O of N because we're looping through, we're iterating over the whole each character in the string and we're not we don't have any nested loops or anything so it's just going to be o of n time space is going to be o of 1 actually cuz we're not we don't have any additional data structures all of these variables this is all o of 1 space so and even this too this is o of 1 space checking the minimum so the time is o of n space is o of 1 this is a pretty efficient solution Hopefully you guys, hopefully you understood the, this problem. Hopefully I did a good job explaining. Let me know in the comments if you still need, if there's still something you're confused on and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And that's all I got for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to learn another fundamental algorithm called binary search, click on this video over here. And if the part two video is out, then you can check that out over here. So hopefully I see you in one of those videos and thank you guys for watching.